Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog but she also has some expertise in lab practices which we will be drawing on later in the video. Now, anti-vaxxers have been banging on about graphene oxide in COVID vaccines since they were first introduced. They have been proven wrong again and again, but this time they claim to have found proof in Pfizer's own documents. In this video, we will be going back to the science and seeing if they really have found some evidence or if they are wrong again. But just before we examine this, I often get asked what I mean by an anti-vaxxer. The definition that I use is any person who spreads misinformation about any vaccine. Whether they have previously had vaccines is not relevant to the definition. So the source of the latest claim about graphene oxide is the expose, and they claim the following. Breaking FDA confirms graphene oxide is in the mRNA COVID-19 vaccines after being forced to publish confidential Pfizer documents by order of the US federal court. The article goes on to show an excerpt from one of the Pfizer documents with the words overlaid with graphene oxide highlighted along with the following text. This is most peculiar because medicine regulators with the help of the mainstream media have denied for months on end that the graphene oxide is an ingredient of the COVID-19 vaccine. They've been able to say this because those who've proven and speculated graphene oxide is in the Pfizer COVID-19 injection have been asking the wrong question. What everyone should have been asking is, is graphene oxide used in the manufacturing process of the Pfizer COVID vaccine? Because as this document, which the FDA attempted to keep confidential and sealed the 75 years, shows graphene oxide is indeed used in the manufacturing process of the vaccine because it is vital in helping to make the vaccine's lipid nanoparticles stable. Can't really work out how graphene oxide could possibly keep um, lipid nanoparticles stable, but that's what they're saying. Now, before I look at the claim being made with regards to the graphene oxide being used in the manufacture of the Pfizer COVID vaccine, I would like to point out that the claim that the FDA attempted to keep it confidential and sealed for 75 years is total bollocks. At the top of this slide, you can see the information from the FDA document release. Underneath it, you can see the same information that was published in a peer-reviewed article in Nature in February 2021, and it was available before that as a preprint in September 2020. So, in other words, no one was attempting to keep this information confidential and sealed. It was publicly available before the Pfizer vaccine was even approved. And of course, the claim that the FDA tried to keep any information secret for 75 years is also bollocks. They originally estimated that it would take 55 years to release all the information requested at their current staffing levels, but they did offer to prioritise the information that was most important. The people requesting the information weren't happy with this, so they got a court order to increase the release rate which meant the FDA had to hire 15 contractors at a cost of $3 million to process the data, which means that there is now lots of information available for totally clueless people to misinterpret. But let's go back to the claim that the document shows that graphene oxide is used in the manufacture of the Pfizer COVID vaccine. You can see the heading for the section of the Pfizer document is cryo-EM of P2S. Cryo-EM is short for cryogenic electron microscopy. And what this section of the document is describing is the process that was used to perform the cryo-EM. It has 
nothing whatsoever to do with manufacturing COVID vaccines. Unlike a standard microscope, viewing a sample with an electron microscope isn't as simple as a sort of plopping it on the glass and looking through the eyepiece. You have to follow a rather complex process and this is what the paragraph is describing. The first step in the process is applying your sample to a suitable substrate, which is some sort of metal grid. I've only ever used copper ones, but the people doing this work use much more expensive gold ones. These grids are often coated with another substrate to improve the quality of the image. One such coating is graphene oxide, and that's what they used in this case. By the way, the picture on this slide is an enlarged image. The actual grids are about three millimetres in diameter and a bit of a pain in the ass to work with if you have poor hand-to-eye coordination like I do. So basically, anti-vaxxers saw the words graphene oxide surrounded by a bunch of words that they didn't understand and presented them as a smoking gun. But they weren't showing a smoking gun. They were just demonstrating that they are scientifically illiterate. The authors of the article didn't just stop there, though. They decided to roll out a few more anti-vax tropes. So let's have a look at them now. The next claim that they made is the old chestnut that the vaccine contains lipids that carry manufacturers' warnings that state they are never, in bold, to be used in humans or animals. Ding, da, ding, ding. The manufacturer that they are talking about here is Cayman Chemicals. Here's another product that Cayman Chemicals supplies, sodium chloride stock solution. And if you look at the cautions, you can see that it says, for laboratory research only. This reagent is not for human or veterinary use. For anyone who doesn't know, sodium chloride is common salt, which you can buy from the supermarket. And a stock solution means it has been dissolved in water, which you can also buy from the supermarket or just get out of the tap. And of course, sodium chloride solutions are also available for medical use. So now that we have uncovered product information stating that this sodium chloride solution is not for human or veterinary use, does that mean that all the other products that contain sodium chloride and water should also be withdrawn? Of course not. Whether or not a product is suitable for human or veterinary use isn't just related to the actual compounds it contains. To be used as a pharmaceutical or ingredient in a pharmaceutical, a product needs to be made in accordance with good manufacturing practice, or GMP for short. GMP is a set of principles and procedures that, when followed, helps ensure that therapeutic goods are of high quality and therefore safe for use in humans. And regulatory authorities don't just take the manufacturer's word that they use these procedures. Their facilities have to be audited before they obtain a license, which of course costs money for the company. What this means is only companies that are actually supplying goods to pharmaceutical companies will obtain the certification. If you are just supplying chemicals to laboratories, you won't have the certification and your goods will be labelled accordingly. But just as with saline, this doesn't mean that the product itself isn't suitable for human use. It just hasn't been produced in a certified facility. So yet again, the anti-vaxxers who wrote the article are just demonstrating their ignorance. The article then goes on to show some really scary looking pictures of things that were supposedly found in vials of vaccine, like this one here which is described as follows. This shape, this ball with legs growing out of it, for some reason has aluminium in it. And I can say with certainty that it isn't a mould spore or some other type of biological contamination because the only thing in it is carbon, oxygen, and no signs of nitrogen, no signs of phosphorus, which would indicate something of biological origin. 
I think they're saying carbon and ox- oxygen because that's what's in graphene oxide, but you can't actually tell from scanning electron microscopy, which is what this has been taken with, whether it's got hydrogen or not as well. So they haven't actually shown that whatever this weird thing is, is graphene oxide. Anyway, I digress back to what they were saying. So this thing that's growing is non-biological. Now, I don't know why they're saying it's growing. I mean, you couldn't possibly tell with an electron microscope whether something was growing or not. You literally take the images under a vacuum and they're static. You can't have things moving around. And then there is this. They all seem to be made predominantly out of carbon and oxygen. And they were in both the Moderna and Pfizer samples. And they seem to be in fiber forms. In the Moderna sample, the carbon oxygen structures seem to be taking nanosphere forms and crystalline forms. And in the Pfizer sample, seem to be only forming fibers and crystals. As I said with the last image, it's impossible to say whether it's just got carbon and oxygen in it because with a scanning electron microscope, you can't actually detect whether there's hydrogen there or not. So it could just be one of any inorganic compounds that contain carbon, oxygen and hydrogen. And it goes on with all these pictures of things that people supposedly found in vaccines. Now, as I previously mentioned, Cindy has a bit of lab experience. So I decided to ask her opinion of what was happening here. And here's Cindy here demonstrating some of her lab skills. Now, when I asked Cindy about the pictures, she reminded me that some labs can be a little sloppy. So what we could be seeing here could just be labs using poor sample preparation technique and inadvertently contaminating the samples during the preparation process. Cindy also reminded me, however, that sometimes labs get the blame for sloppy humans. So another possibility is that the samples were already contaminated before they were even sent to the lab. We know for sure that the bits and pieces that the various labs photographed didn't originate from the vaccines because all the vaccine batches are tested by regulatory authorities before being released. If they contain contaminants, they wouldn't be released. This slide shows the information for Australia, but other countries have similar systems. So in summary, there has never been any evidence that vaccines contain graphene oxide, just people demonstrating their lack of skill in handling samples. And the latest smoking gun is just yet another fizzer that shows nothing more than the fact that anti-vaxxers are scientifically illiterate. If you'd like to look further into the data that I've presented, I provided links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And thanks to everyone who has bought me a coffee or little Cindy here a treat. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make video about the science in the future. Sydney will be back demonstrating her lab skills soon. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.